Hi, I'm Alicia Dietrich with the Dean's Office in the College of Fine Arts, and I'm so excited. I'm here with Professor Amy Simmons from the Butler School of Music today, and I'm so excited to get to talk to her and introduce her to you, our new students in the Butler School of Music. Uh, welcome. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. So, Professor Simmons, can you tell us about what you'll be teaching this fall or how students in the department might encounter you? Oh, absolutely. Uh, well, first, uh, for the first time, because of the changes that have been put upon us by the COVID situation that we're all experiencing now, we are going to organize some meetings in the music and human learning area, which I'll refer to as the MHL area from now on, just so you know what that means. Those are music education students, by the way. We just have a different name for it at UT. Uh, we're going to try to organize some Zoom meetings for all incoming people to get to know them a little better. So students will get to meet me that way, even though I don't typically teach courses that freshmen take. Um, I do teach two courses, one undergraduate course for students who are about to enter student teaching and one graduate course in research and music education that uh, I really enjoy. And both are wonderful things to teach. And I enjoy the time that I get to spend with all of my students, especially those that are so close to graduation, who have worked so hard for four or five years to get to that point in their development. So I understand your research focuses on music teaching and learning and in music psychology but you also continue to play the oboe professionally. So I'm wondering if you can talk a little bit about how your career arc and how your research and performance profile complement one another. Absolutely. You know, there is an old saying uh, that I wish would just go away, uh, that those who can't do teach. And we here in the MHL area at UT think that is absolutely not true. So I think all the performance experiences I have in life really contribute to my understanding of how to teach. So good musicians can make great teachers, but the skill sets are very different. So I've been privileged to have developed wonderful performance skills and been able to apply those to my teaching skills over time. Um, I, since coming to UT actually now, it's five years ago, I have played professionally less than I used to uh, up until that point, simply because the demands of the job here require my attention, which I'm happy to give, to the undergraduate students in the teacher preparation program and the graduate students who want to go train teachers at universities when they finish their PhDs. But I can tell you that having a full performance life up until this point has been a wonderful advantage to my teaching career. So as we've all been quarantined during the pandemic, how are you finding ways to stay creative? What's inspiring you right now? <laughs> well, I think we've had to be creative in many ways <laughs> uh, in our lives right now because all the, the ways that we're used to doing anything, really, uh, many, many of those things have changed anyway. Um, my creativity right now includes making music with my children. I have two, one is 15, one is 13. Uh, my oldest, uh, she's, an oboe player and my youngest is a trumpet player. We have a lot of fun making music together, whether we're singing or playing our instruments. Um, creativity wise, uh, in other ways, professionally, I write. I write almost every day. So I'm creating things about music teaching and human learning that uh, I get to, do, to share with the world. My most current uh, piece is a collaborative effort among other uh, professors at universities around Texas that focus on how to think about online assignments that have become such a huge part of what we're doing right now in music teaching. Uh, I think band directors, orchestra directors, choir teachers all around the state are hungry for how to structure their thinking when they're organizing assignments for students in ways that they've never had to do before. So we're tackling that problem and hopefully uh, you'll get to read that soon enough. So what's something about you that would surprise your colleagues or your students? <laughs> well, two things. Uh, I'm somewhat of a musical omnivore. Uh, what I mean by that is I like all kinds of music, highbrow music, lowbrow music, classical music, jazz, country, rock. I, it, it's all great. It all has a place in my life in one way, shape or form. I enjoy singing with my kids. 
And they've said to me that one of the coolest things they think about their mom is that I not only just let them listen to the music they want to listen to, but I can sing along no matter what they're listening to. So that's a, a nice thing. Uh, I think you guys can transfer that to your future students. They're going to appreciate the fact that you might relate to the kinds of music that they listen to outside of school. So, uh, you know, keep your ears open and experience different things. I think the second thing I would say that would surprise my students is how many places I've been around the world. I was a military child. Uh, my dad was in the Air Force, so we moved around a lot when I was a kid, which gave me the opportunity to go to many different countries before I turned 12. So I think that opened my eyes to the value that comes from knowing about the world and knowing about other kinds of people and other cultures. And it's really enhanced my appreciation and understanding for the global community in a way that I think just being in one place doesn't. So I hope you all have the opportunity to experience travel the way I have at some point in your life. What would you like to tell the 20-year-old version of yourself in college? <laughs> well, now that is such a great question. Um, you know, I have always valued sleep, but because I valued being involved in as many things as I possibly could to get the most out of my education, I didn't always sleep enough. Uh, and that compromises, of course, anyone's ability to function at their highest level of ability. Um, so I think I might tell myself to choose what I get involved in strategically. There's no reason to close doors, but maybe every door doesn't have to stay open the entire time you're an undergraduate student. I, I remember um, feeling very overwhelmed at the end of one semester and having one of my parents say to me, you do know you can say no to some things, right? <laughs> and that you sort of do this to yourself. So I think some advice that I would give my 20 year old self would be to really be mindful of maintaining good health while I also tried to involve myself in the right kinds of experiences that would enhance what I already knew and could do rather than just being involved in everything. The power of no, right? Oh, absolutely. It's really important. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking time to talk with us today, Professor Simmons. I really enjoyed getting to know you and knowing more about you and your career and your research. And I know our students are really looking forward to seeing you when classes resume in the fall. Well, we are also, all of us here in the MHL area and at the Butler School are looking forward to meeting those of you who will join us in the fall. Thank you for your time, Alicia. It was a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.